Amen. Well, just before lockdown last year, Sue and I um, got to visit Israel, which was a fantastic blessing. And one of the places we got to visit was the bustling modern town of Nazareth. It was nothing like our ideas of Nazareth um, from the Bible stories. But in one place, they have what they call the Nazareth Village Experience, a, a reconstruction of first century life in the village where Jesus grew up. And one of the people we met was Abraham the shepherd. With his shepherd's staff and his great white flowing beard, he looked every inch a, a first century shepherd. And yet in reality, I think his name was Henry from Somerset. Um, in reality, there's a massive gap between the rural life of first century Galilee and the modern world of today's towns and cities. So what was Henry doing there, dressed up like that? It was because he had come to love Jesus and he wanted to introduce others to the Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd, says Jesus. Of course, this is one of several I am sayings of Jesus. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the, um, the resurrection and the life. I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the vine. Each time Jesus is picking up on God's name, revealed to Moses in the Old Testament, I am who I am. But each time also Jesus picks up on a particular aspect of his identity. So here we have, I am the good shepherd. Throughout the Bible, uh, God is pictured as a shepherd of his people. Um, Stephen mentioned some of the times where um, different characters in the Bible were shepherds, but God is pictured as the shepherd of his people. And now in Jesus, he's come among them in person. And like any good shepherd, he cares for the sheep. In Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 9, verse 36, we're, we're told when he saw the crowds... He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. On holiday in the, the Lake District a few years ago, we were horrified to see tourists who ignored all the signs about not letting their dogs off the lead in lambing season, causing extreme distress to the sheep as their dogs chased after them. Truly the sheep looked harassed and helpless due to this irresponsible incident. On another occasion, Jesus tells the story of a shepherd who leaves the flock to go and search for one lost sheep. And when he finds it, he brings, back, he brings it back on his shoulders, rejoicing. The fact is that sheep can need a lot of caring for. They can be silly creatures, very silly. When we were camping as kids, we had to feed one young lamb which regularly got its head stuck through railings and had to be rescued. And they're not always the clean, white, fluffy animals that we fondly imagine. Again, I remember as a child on my Uncle Alwyn's farm, the horrid smell of the, the sheep dip that they had to go through every year to protect them from parasites. Sheep need a lot of care. In Britain, where predators have been eliminated, they can be left to roam on hillsides until they need rounding up. But in Bible times, they needed the shepherd's strong protection. In, in fact, the shepherd lived so closely with the sheep that they all knew his voice and followed him. We use sheepdogs to drive the sheep. But in the Middle East, where sheep are largely uh, reared for wool, the, the, the shepherd goes on ahead of the sheep and they all follow him as he leads them on to fresh pastures. Apparently on one occasion an Arab guide was explaining this tradition to, to some tourists when they spotted a man in the distance driving a flock of sheep with a rather menacing stick. Was the guide wrong? He immediately stopped the coach and ran after the man. A few minutes later he came back 
with a big beaming smile across his face. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I've just spoken to the man. He's not the shepherd. He is, in fact, the butcher. <laughs> the true shepherd leads his sheep. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Jesus makes it clear that believers in him, his sheep, follow him because they know his voice. One writer, Kenneth Bailey, in his book The Good Shepherd, describes a situation seen by a 19th century author where several flocks of sheep had been mixed up in the narrow streets of a village in the early morning. He said, Travellers have noticed the wonderful readiness with which the sheep of a large flock will recognise the shepherd's voice. Though several flocks are mingled, they speedily separate at the command of a shepherd, while the word of a stranger would have no effect on them. Such is the ability of the sheep to distinguish the voice of their own shepherd from the voices of other shepherds who may be calling at the same time. Whether the shepherd simply calls Tau, Tau, or sings his unique tune, the shepherd hears his voice and uh, sorry, the sheep hear his voice and follow. What's this got to do with us living in a, a 21st century urban environment? Well, as Christians, we recognise the voice of Christ our Saviour in the Bible and we seek to follow him by faith. My sheep listen to my voice, he says. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. The great thing about the good shepherd, of course, is that he lays down his life for the sheep. Other shepherds may look after their own interests, uh, first, the hired hand will run away when he sees the wolf coming, but the true shepherd gives everything to defend his sheep. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us at the cross, paying the price for our sins. He laid his life down for us and he raised it up again in his mighty resurrection. And in him we can have full security. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. So I wonder if you know this shepherd today. I wonder if you hear his voice calling you to follow. Maybe this all sounds like an episode of Country File or... Uh, it used to be one man and his dog. But like Henry from Somerset, I could tell you that Jesus, the good shepherd, is worth knowing and following. I would say give your life to him and you won't be disappointed. He gave his life for sinners like you and he's able to give the joy of eternal life. Trust in him and you'll be safe for all eternity. Nothing will ever snatch you from his hand. He's the one who will feed and refresh your soul, guide and protect you and lead you safely home even maybe sometimes through the darkest places. So I encourage you to believe in Jesus, the Good Shepherd. He's worthy of all our trust. In Jesus' name. Amen.